Hey everyone, you're here with Mark at Perfect Gardens TV. So, I am absolutely just following, falling in love with the Terraganics and the Pit Moss. Obviously, using I end up also using some Mycos um, and a little bit of Recharge um, and the Terraganics, the M1. I mean, just absolutely falling in love with it. Uh, the, I actually didn't do two foliage sprays. I was actually really concerned this morning because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get back to my guardian time and if the soil was going to be dried out. Like so many of us out there, we're growing in probably hot climates or high altitude climates like myself. I'm a mile high and forgive me my voice. I, I'm just um, a little congested, but I just, I just wanted to show you guys this, that I, I came through and the, 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 the soil is just so soft and I don't even want to press down on it and it's moist, you know, and, and that's what I've been noticing, especially about the garden um, and the soil every day is that by mid afternoon, the soil dries back just slightly. What I'm doing every single time is I end up just kind of just trying to observe what, what I'm seeing. And then by morning time, the top of the soil ha is moist again. And what ends up happening is the moisture down below ends up actually just wicking back up to the top. And I'm just so amazed because the soil I've put in is like a, I think it's a 432, I believe, something like that, or 433. I, I showed you guys my, my mix when I did it, just kind of mixed all my nutrients, mixed all the soil. And once again, just, I mean, look at the garden. The two foliar sprays with uh, drops of balance at, uh, because I use tap water, I use four mLs per gallon for drops of balance. I use one ounce of the EM1, and I use 40 mLs of Organic Shield. Uh, obviously, I've been talking about Organic Shield a lot, guys. The Organic Shield, when it breaks down, it breaks down to CO2, wa water, and sugar which are absolutely essential for a complete integrated pest management solution. You also need trace minerals to help complete the enzyme reaction so bugs are not actually attracted to your plants uh, on a daily basis. Uh, that's pretty much what I've been learning over the last couple of years, a lot from John Kempf and some of the leading microbiologists like uh, James White. Of You've seen these people. And again, I'm just trying to show you the garden. I'm just doing a pot garden this year. Yeah, you know, obviously pot, I mean, physical pots, 100% vegetable garden. I, I believe right now it's June 9th, June 10th. And this is what it looks like, you know? And we're gonna see what, what's going on. Obviously some of these plants, uh, like the tomato plants, I'm gonna be giving them more nutrients uh, because they're going to have a longer growing cycle, but but just, I mean, look at the moisture on these pots. You know, I came in late in the day and this is just because of the pit moss. I mean, the pit moss is, is amazing. And every single morning when I, when I normally water, because I am going to give them a little bit of water today. Uh, and that's one of the main key successes to a garden is actually um, clean, consistent watering, which I ended up actually, I'm waiting for another another siphon uh, system but this one i purchased over at home depot that's actually that works okay but i do have to do additional dilution ratios but the the next one coming in what ends up happening is i put the drops balance in here and as the water uh, siphons the drops of balance out and ends up cleaning my tap water right so i'm on a daily basis actually giving them clean mineralized water i mean you can see the leaves see how just crisp you know and healthy they are i gotta come through and actually pick all these weeds out but no big deal see these guys you can see all my potatoes going again most of these products are available if you end up on perfect gardens and if they're not available on perfect gardens they'll be, they're available over at at uh, dropsbounds.com if you are on perfect gardens i believe the discount code uh is IPM 10 uh, for Organic Shield. And if you're over on Drops of Balance, the discount code I believe is PG10. Um, and it'll help you save some money. And they, over at Drops of Balance, they actually have available the Organic Shield, Drops of Balance, 
Terragonix, Mycos. Anyways, guys, I'm just gonna keep you up to date. Obviously, I, I live in the middle of uh, town, so none, no medical plants for me this year. Uh, but I do think, and you've heard me preach this quite a bit, I've, I've definitely lost a few people interested in the channel. We're talking more about food, but I definitely think food will become more valuable in the next couple of years than medicinal plants. You know, if I had the opportunity, I would be growing at least one or two medical plants, but I don't. So I'm just going to take it one day at a time right now. One more additional thing that I have uh, noticed about this as well is the pots that have the liners from the grassroots actually does retain their water better than the fabric pots that do not. So, you know, definitely want to kind of acknowledge that. Uh, I have had to put a little bit more water on this versus over here, I, I literally, I mean, I, I'm not gonna show you right now, but I mean, I'm, a, I'm a literally just gonna water my garden with you guys real fast, just to kind of show you once again how fast I have to water these plants because of how much the soil retains. So I'm just letting the water cool down right now. Don't want to give it warm water. And let me switch hands. A little more control. But literally, all I do is this. Every day. And, this, I, and I put in 10% pit moss. It doesn't take a lot. It really doesn't, you know? Um, and if you're in hotter climates, I'm pretty high up. I'm, I mean, I'm in Boulder. So give a little bit more for the uh, potatoes. Obviously, if the plants are bigger, I'm going to give it a little bit more water and retaining more. And also because these are the fabric pots without the liners, I am definitely giving these pots a little bit more water than the rest. But you'll see, I mean, guys, literally, anyone that has, and these are 30 gallon pots, why am I saying this, right? I'm saying this because the, anyone that's used 30 gallon pots knows how much you have to water it, right? This is all I have to water What I've identified, this is all I have to water every single day. Obviously it's gonna get hotter and we'll see, the plants are gonna get bigger, they're gonna take up more water. These have less plants, so get a little less water. These have a little more plants. So you have to think about it. Same thing with your, your medical plants, right? If they're bigger, you're gonna give them a little bit more water. If they're smaller, you're gonna give them a little less water. And why is that, really? Mainly, mainly, why are you giving them less water? Well, it's because, mainly, it's because you don't want your, your nutrients to run out of the bottom of the bag. And that also goes with dry amendments as well. Um, dry amendments, you know, law of density, that's why you actually want a humic layer. It's important. That's why it's so important to just not grow with, with cocoa or with sphagnum peat moss. And that's, what, again, one of the reasons why I'm absolutely in love with pit moss is because it ends up becoming a, uh, the humic layer that, that, that holds onto the microbes. And once the microbes start to build their colonies... Uh, it also starts to uh, hold on to the dry amendments and keeping the dry amendments exactly where they're at so they're not settling into the bottom of the bag because we live in a world of law, uh, law of density. And this is literally all I have to do with the, uh, this is the 250 gallons of soil right there. Same situation. I'm going to water my entire garden with you guys because I've actually never measured how long it takes for me to water my garden. As you can see too, I'm also putting hay on. I have to do that over here. I'm waiting for the plants to get a little taller. And I'm also gonna pick all the weeds out before 
I put hay down. I did put hay down around mainly the strawberries just because I I put I put everything down from seed this year except for the strawberries and a few um, onions I believe. I, uh, I think the the onions I purchased were right there. I just kind of wanted to see the difference versus the onions I put down from seed, which obviously definitely next year. Um, instead of doing, putting the seeds in early and transplanting, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put seeds directly into the ground. One thing I really noticed uh, this year, especially, is that the seeds that I, because I did a little experiment, I put, I, you know, you could see I, I, I started with the seeds, the, and I, I put them in plugs and I transplanted a lot of this stuff. And there was a very slow, uh, what would you say? Uh, recovery process for some reason and then I also put seeds in directly into the ground and the ones that I put directly into the ground actually caught up to the seeds that I ended up starting in plugs and, and transplanting so I definitely am next year going to if you do live in Boulder Colorado I would recommend putting your seeds into the ground roughly around May 20th and I'm going to have to double check. I did hear that uh, in the next couple days it's going to get near freezing. So there's a good chance that I might end up also being a little bit more sensitive to how much water I'm giving them over the next couple days because of I did hear that it is going to drop one more time all the way down to, I think it said down to 10 degrees or something like that. I have to double check the weather. And... You know, which totally sucks because normally that only happens one time and you are already seeing the snowfall happen over the last few months. I mean, not months, but over the last few, uh, the last week. And I, but I'm ready. I'm going to put, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm actually going to put this, uh, this over it again to kind of uh, keep the, most of the snow completely off. But a lot of snow did fall off, so I'm actually hoping it doesn't snow, it just freezes. And then I'm going to put plastic over this as well. So we'll see how that goes. But one day at a time, that's all you could do. You know, it's farming. And sometimes some crops come in, sometimes some crops don't. Uh, and that's why I think it's just so important that we spend a little more time, you know, more backyard gardeners spend more time growing their own food because uh, crops are sensitive. And I believe... I almost, I almost actually forgot the, the corn and all these. I believe in the last year, 25 uh, food processing plants in the, in the last in the United States actually burned down by accident somehow. And for me, whether it was whether it was on purpose or whether it was by accident, 25 food processing plants that burned down. One of those was actually in my in my hometown, my Sims, California, the main processing plant, uh, TNA, burned down. I'll make sure to include some pictures on that. We begin this afternoon with developing news. A massive fire destroyed a produce processing facility in Salinas, and this prompted evacuations as well as a hazmat response. No matter what, that burning down is going to affect the entire um, food shortage supply. And people are starting to see it, you know, supply chains... Uh, already through post, uh, you know, I don't want to say the name because my the, channel, the video might get demonetized, but already through post uh, Cove, you know, and uh, we're already having supply chain issues on that. And then we we have 25 uh, food processing plants in the United States alone. We were, we're not talking about the one that got bombed a couple years, uh, like two years ago. Uh, and I think it was like, I have to double check this, but I think it was like, the second or third largest storage for wheat and processing. So I think guys, if you're out there and you have the opportunity, put some seeds down. Even this plant, let me show you this one over here. I mean, I'm just doing small little experiments with this pit moss. That's what, that's what I think in my viewpoint is, is one of our responsibilities is to, um, is to test uh, the materials that we recommend to you guys. That's why 
That's why I don't have a lot of products on Perfect Gardens. And that's why Drops of Balance doesn't have a lot of products. Uh, because a lot of stuff just doesn't work well together. And I just threw this plant in. It was totally pretty much dead. Threw a little water in it. And came back. Most of the soil was dry. I thought it was dry, but it wasn't. I mean, and you can tell because how the leaves are, are standing up. They're not drooping. Which I just find that to be very interesting. Anyways, we're going to be getting in also to learning how to make your own biology in the next few months. And uh, I hope you guys look forward to the next video with, uh, with Chris from Mr. Grow It. Uh, because part two is coming up, baby. Once again, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone. You know, little did some people know that you can use this to consume in other ways, not just smoking, which is obviously super popular. You know, people could come and experience like an event where you come and you dine, essentially eat, but what you eat is infused or has, you know, cannabis in it to some degree.